once again so advanced. Absolutely. All that time ago. Yeah. It's amazing. In the original in the original Star Trek, who would have thought that a two-way radio would allow you to talk into space with something just this tiny? That's but great. now I'll bet you have a cell phone that's that's uh, very much like this. Absolutely, I do. We're talking about the peaceful exploration of space, and of course we have a recreation of one of the phaser weapons down here. Very good. But in very Star Trek fashion, mm -hmm. it can be set to kill if you really need to, but it can be set to stun because we really don't want to be going right. around and killing people. Right. Right over here we have um, tricorders. Mm -hmm. Very handy dandy. Uh, this one here is is completely open, but as you see, it can also be attached to a um, holster oh, okay. that you can put on your side like this. Very and cool. And have your hands free Very until you cool. need your instrument. That's so it's really great. What is this? This is a Starfleet phaser rifle. So you see, see someone pointing at you with that? Stop. 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 You're it's in trouble. very powerful. You want to back off. <laughs> I need one of those. On the other hand... This is the blaster that killed Captain Kirk. Oh, my goodness. So. Oh, look at this. Just don't point it at anybody. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Can I go like this? No, 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 no. That's a bad idea. Okay. Until we're done with our We job. best take this away from me. I'm dangerous. Yeah. After disarming me, Michael and Denise were kind enough to show some of the costumes to be put on display throughout the exhibition floor. Oh, <gasps> that was cool. Wait till you see stuff oh, in here. Look at it. Gorgeous. Cool. <gasps> yeah. Love it. Yeah, Tom Hardy, oh. Shinzon from uh, Nemesis. And the next one, can you imagine going to work in this? Oh, yes. This costume uh, was for Lieutenant Uhura, who mm -hmm. was played by Nichelle Nichols. I want to put it on. Right, right. <laughs> and <laughs> please. And then, Michael. Scott Look. Bakula, Jonathan Archer, designed by uh, by Robert Blackman. Yeah, that's the the emblem for. Uh, Inspired by NASA uh, NASA jumpsuits, yeah, complete okay. yep. complete with NASA. Oh no, I see this right. This is mm -hmm. awesome. So yeah. much detail. Scott Bakula. Okay. Course, well known. Oh wait. You gotta see this. I recognize. Yeah. You got it. I recognize. Oh, I have to see this. I yes. know this is gonna be a monster. <gasps> Ted Cassidy played Ruck. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. And this is 40 something years old. This Look at amazing. how much uh, the detailing and how so much, much it's detail. hold, held up. Yeah. It's and heavy. speaking and speaking of ho holding up and being distressed, our next one here. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, oh it is heavy. It is heavy. Well, this one's lighter. We have before and after. This is uh, Worn oh, in Star Trek II, Khan. Khan was played by Ricardo, Ricardo Montalban, right? right? Exactly. And then we have the distressed one who oh, met an untimely end. When he was zapped, oh, my by, goodness. The, when yeah. he was zapped by the Genesis device. He had device. it at that point. <laughs> and behind you is an amazing, <gasps> you can't really see because it's the not The wedding dress. Ripped. Yes, oh, very good. Oh, gorgeous. Vaughn K. Johnson wore this. Yes, ec excellent. That um, actress played uh, Kamala on uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. Oh, I have to try this one on too. It is, it is beautiful. <laughs> I have to. You think it will gorgeous. fit me? Well, we can find out. Oh my gosh! <gasps> it's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, and this Stunning. is just, and this is just some of the stuff that we have. This is amazing. Yeah, it is really cool. Okay, go away so I can try it. All right, we're going back to work. <laughs> Bye. Well, unfortunately, the execs at Paramount stopped me before I could don that beautiful wedding dress. Maybe I'll just try and get a part in the new Star Trek movie, and they'll make me my own costume. Enough fantasizing. Up next is Bob Jocelyn from Contour Entertainment. Contour is heading up the Encounter Theatre construction, the first of its kind anywhere in the world. So clearly we have a work in progress behind us. What's going on? What is this ultimately going to be? Well, this is the beginning of the assembly for the Encounter Theatre, which is the, I guess you'd call it the star attraction. So clearly we're in the early stages for this project. How, you know, what are the other steps? What's going to happen next? Well, what's going to happen immediately mm -hmm. is that uh, what you see behind us here is actually going to be raised up to about 25 feet in height. Oh. So much goes into it. I don't think people realize how much goes into making all of this happen. So it's actually exciting. I want to see the finished product. Yes, and not only that. Puzzle. Yes, Every exactly. Every piece has to fit, hopefully, right? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> So can I get a demonstration? What's what's going on here? I see nuts and bolts and... Well, I can't demonstrate too much because it's actually all kind of uh, bolted down static okay. right now. But what you have here is about 3,000 pounds of equipment mm -hmm. that is the apex of the entire Encounter Theater structure. 3,000 pounds? Not the rest of the theater, of course. Just this part. And what this part, this part is made to be the, the center for the structure of the mm -hmm. theater. This part that's bolted to it is the part that actually animates the polyhedron I told you about earlier. Um, and what it has is it has uh, two 
hoists that will raise and lower. One raises and lowers the whole polyhedron, while the other raises and lowers the bottom, so the thing actually will open yeah. in that way. Yeah. Then there's another uh, motor here that will actually rotate the whole thing, and it has an encoder, so we always know where it is. Um, then what we have over here behind you mm -hmm. is a structure for a donut-shaped area around that that's going to be at a little lower level than the, the hoist structure okay. that we just talked about. This will contain lighting, speakers, projectors, and the other special effects equipment we need to right. do the job. Um, the legs you see over there are the actual legs that become the structure. It's kind of like a big spider sort of okay. structure. Oh, I see. It's six, right. six sided, not eight, eight legged, right. but <laughs> that's how the theater will be right. uh, constructed. Oh, very elaborate. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. My last victim to be grilled is the legend himself, Herman Zimmerman. What has sprouted from Herman's imagination over the years has made what you all know as Star Trek a visual reality. We are so lucky that he was plucked from retirement to bring Star Trek the tour to life. The D bridge, this is cool. This looks like a movie set. I mean, well, this is neat. <laughs> it does. Yeah, well, it should look like a movie <laughs> set. It, it, it's a reproduction, of course. Uh, this is uh, one of two bridges that were built uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, this is, as you can see, there are seams every 10 feet or so. It's about 36 feet wide and about 45 feet long. A series bridge, which we also have in the tour, oh, okay. which is only about 20 feet around and certainly less than 10 feet high. It also has a ramp that, uh, that gets you from about 18 inches in the back down to uh, floor level. And uh, in the uh, original design, uh, Gene Roddenberry wanted the D bridge to be more conversational. Uh, we settled on an oval design and when we put an oval table in it, uh, it looks silly. They have a really? bunch of, bunch of uh, supposed astronauts, <laughs> adventurers, right? It just wasn't working. Sitting around an oval table <laughs> like, like they were on The View. Okay? Yeah, I can't imagine so, that. So that didn't happen. So, so we it went evolved. Back, we went back to the idea of a captain in a captain's chair right. with a helm and navigation console down front. None of that stuff is here. This is going to be cool. I can't wait to see this when it's all finished. It's already cool. And you're not even close to being done, right? You're not seeing all the little <laughs> things that I'm seeing that, that, that we still have to attend to. But Such uh, as? The audience will be able to watch uh, other people in here. And uh, a lot of people will elect to come in here, sit in the captain's chair, come through the turbo lift, take a look at what's going on on the situation board in the back and watch of course what's going on on the view screen i want to do that i want to sit in the chair you want to sit in the I chair i really do everybody wants to sit in the chair <laughs> i know i'm not the only one <laughs> there's going to be a long line everybody wants to be in the chair very cool on january 17th 2008 star trek the tour opened for a media preview and gala party william shatner was on hand as the official spokesman for the tour star trek the tour begins and you're at the very beginning. The next morning, the tour opened its doors to the public. Fans came in droves and poured over all the amazing sights and experiences. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning what has gone into making Star Trek the tour. Next time, remember to bring a friend that maybe doesn't know that much about Star Trek. And you never know who could drop by for a visit. <laughs>